And did you move my camera? Because I want I had it trained where I wanted it. Well, I wanted to get your <laughs> intro. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we'll we'll let our guest lecturer take it away. So this is going to be weird for me because it's a very strange setup and I haven't done this before. But I'm Tree. I am a mixed media conceptual artist and I'm also the deputy editor for the Rainbow Hub, which is an online LGBTQIA magazine that we spend a lot of time confronting culture in a variety of ways and talking about representation. So yes, this is what I do with my time. <laughs> so today we're talking about art in the 20th and 21st centuries. Hi! Hi! <laughs> and it's basically, you hit the 20th century with art and it becomes a big ball of tiny, white, whiny, wibbly wobbly stuff and it just explodes everywhere. It's wild. And um, I do have notes, that's a weird thing I know. And I always, I feel the need to mention that I'm just one artist. I have a very particular aesthetic that I'm interested in. And so this is a taste. It's not even like a big taste. This is like, you know, a tiny, tiny little nibble at the art world. Tiny nibble. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, and all of the, the uh, Prezi presentations Eric will have links to, so if I just fly by something or you're really interested in an artist or something, you can go back and look at it for yourself. Is there a way to move that without being all the way over there? Uh, no, I will move it. So we're Okay, ding. Yes, we have multiple technologies going on at once. That's really exciting. So, so one of the, the, the big questions is what could possibly have led to the vast amounts of different types of arts of different types of art that existed, that bleh, works, <laughs> and art movements that popped up in the 20th century. Got some to stay. No, don't oh. do it yet. Okay. <laughs> this is why I don't have to do it. <laughs> oh. Got ideas. Self-awareness. Because people weren't self-aware before. Well, not so much as like the 18th century was kind of like strict rule and whatnot. You just defeated Great Britain, so you know people were trying to get a feel of who they actually are. Okay, hold on to that for a second, because we are talking about uh, 20th and 21st century art in like kind of the world, just not America. So we're talking about England and Europe also. <laughs> not as much, you know, Asia as I want there to be, but there is some Japanese stuff. Kicking around Are in there. Talking about the Revolution That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Things that affect oh. lots of people. Though, though Lloyd, um, the Enlightenment certainly could be like seen as you know deep background for some of the stuff. So. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to hold on to it because it does play a thing, but we're, that, that's getting a little further back than I really want to tackle. <laughs> or else I'll end up in the land of Shakespeare, because I will end up there. <laughs> hey, Shakespeare is cool, dude. <laughs> he wrote for the masses. Well, I thought Shakespeare wrote a lot of this stuff just to piss off diplomats. Well, true. There's that. <laughs> he was a little bit of a snot, just a smidge of a snot. <laughs> what else? What happened in um, the 20th century? Big world changing things. Couple of them killed a bunch of people. What did he say? Hiroshima. That, that's part of it. How about World Wars One and Two? Mm -hmm. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> what else could be on here? I'm just trying to get. There we go. <laughs> Um, what else happened? Um, what'd you say? Uh, could you speak up over in Green Bay a little bit? 
Women's liberation, women's rights, voting rights. That works. Human rights in general. Yeah. I also think that it kind of, people started realizing that art wasn't just literature, painting, prose, and, and theater. There were other forms of art. So there were different genres that started popping up. Yeah. And the, our conceptions of art change. You hopped over a bunch of my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> technology. Technology is a good one. Because technology, which comes out of the techno uh, Industrial Revolution, gives us communication. For the first time in the history of ever, we could talk to each other relatively quickly. That's important. <laughs> that means the way ideas are communicated is much more quick. So those are some of the important things. Now click you the button. All right. <laughs> but we have some of them. Globalization. That's that communication thing I was talking about. The Spanish Civil War is actually part of World War II in a really weird way. It was basically the precursor of World War II and was where uh, Mussolini and Hitler tried out some of their uh, World War II favorites. <laughs> <laughs> um, psychoanalytic theory, so we're talking about Freud, the origins of psychotherapy. Uh, Marx and the rise of socialism, colonialism and post-colonialism. We start getting into a world where not just white people are revolting against their oppressors, and that's important. And not just white men, that's the women's lip thing. Postmodernism and postmodern, bleh, I can't talk. <laughs> postmodernism and post-postmodernism, which is, can be also called metamodernity, which we will talk more about. Immigration, people moved around more than they ever had before. <laughs> Uh, worldwide revolutions that talk about quantum physics. Science changed really quickly. And phil philosophical revolutions. So yes, things. And it, click, <laughs> ding. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little bit of it because there's a lot of things that happen. Tons and tons of things happen. And click. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so we have questions about what is art. And it spans, this spans like 100 plus years. And we're kind of going like, sort of from Cezanne to sort of Simpkins. And this is loosey goosey. Um, Eric, could you exit that and pull up Stonebreakers for me? Okay. Sorry, we have a little bit of a transition because I don't always remember to put things in that I want to put in. Um, is I find the right notes? <laughs> there are notes. So the Stonebreaker, this is the Stonebreakers by Corbet, and it is essentially the painting that marks modernism. When, when modern art became modern art, it started here, which I know makes absolutely no sense, but it was when art first started changing from, you know, like mythological scenes and gods and religion and became about people. And. Is that the beginning of Marxism? What'd you say? Uh, speak, what? I caught Marxism and that was it. And that was the beginning of art, you said? Was the beginning of Marxism? Marxism coincided a lot with what, what was going on here? Yeah, this is um, the beginning of like what we consider modern art, modern art in the art world. Um, if you ever take an art history class, that's like an art history art history class, they will talk about this being the beginning of modernism. Did that make more sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes I talk really fast too. And part of the reason also was because we have gross forms gross forms instead of idealized forms. So, you know, realism, sort of. <laughs> and could you go back to the thing? Yes. 
What do you mean? Like, what is girl squad? Um, more realistic, imperfect. Think imperfect. Who in this room is perfect? <laughs> so we have, you know, people who. Have you shown any like Renaissance art? Uh, yeah. Uh, we we've we talked a, we've talked a little bit about uh, about Renaissance art, but you know, if you think of like Michelangelo's David and uh, you know that sort of perfection of form. Yeah. So pretty white dudes and pretty white women who are objectified. And now we're getting out of that somewhat a little. <laughs> um, so Cezanne, that is really weirdly framed. Okay. Who is this guy right here? For those of you who can see that. Um, he Picasso, you guys know who Picasso is, yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did the weird, wacky, like, cutie things. Um, Picasso said of Cezanne that he's the father of us all. And part of that is because once you get into the 20th century in art, there's this thing called abstraction. Do you guys know what abstraction is? Want to take a swing at it? <laughs> Different shape, figure, whatnot. What do you say? Different shapes, figures. That works. It's less real and more um, gestural. Um, cubism is very cubey. <laughs> it's very <laughs> angular. Um, Cezanne is very like painterly and um, it's like we can tell this is a skull, but does it actually look like a skull? <laughs> <laughs> So that's very important. And basically, any artist who's been making art since Cezanne has Cezanne to thank for what they do, <laughs> at least in the West. All right, geometric forms, reduced geometric forms. <laughs> OK, you want to click the button? <laughs> this is so weird. But you know, first things before we get any further into this stuff, are art movements in the 20th century. Do you guys know any? Besides cubism, because I said it a couple times. <laughs> I think the textbook mentions a few. Oh, sorry, can you, Green Bay, could you speak up a little bit more? Honey, you're in Green Bay. I mean, in, in <laughs> Kashina, could you speak up a little bit more? Oh, I was just thinking out loud, so um, not just like painting, art, but you had uh, mm -hmm. like photography. Poetry, poetry was a big movement, movement in the uh, 20th and 21st century. So that is that's an art, right? Well, it's a type of art. We're talking about art movements. Um, like um, as I totally lose her name, geez. Gertrude Stein. Did I get the name right? Yes. She actually is a novelist who wrote in such a way that it was cubist. I, I can't even explain. It took me like 30 pages to explain this in a class. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm not going to try and do it here, but she, she, she managed to, to adapt a visual art form to a literary art form. So we're talking about movements like cubism. And that's moving art from a literary form to a literary? Yeah. No, literary movement is um, kind of a generalized term for when a group of artists decide to do things in a similar way. <laughs> that was my bad. I didn't realize that was, that I wasn't clear on that one. <laughs> so, um, you guys know who the Surrealists are? Heard of Surrealism? Salvador Dali. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, by the end of this, you're going to know something about Surrealism. <laughs> <laughs> you want to click the button? Yes. So we have um, Favism, which is the beast. And it's all very emotive and 
um, colorful and aggressive. You wouldn't think painting can be aggressive. It's aggressive. <laughs> uh, De Brucht, which is actually kind of um, ab abstract expressionism in a different guise. Uh, cubism, analytic, synthetic. <laughs> Futurism, which is awesome. If does anybody you know like steampunk? What is that? Okay. <laughs> Steampunk is um, it's a literary genre that's becoming visuals genre, and it's basically preoccupied with um, steam technology and the aesthetic of uh, Victorian England. So it's pretty, <laughs> it's very pretty. But futurism, when it came out, and it came out in Italy before World War II, was all about oh my God, cars. <laughs> Because this was when cars were first like being introduced over there, and you had an entire movement of people in Italy going, "Cars are awesome! Cars are the best thing ever!" I had an epiphany in a car when I wrecked it. I'm not kidding you. This is the first Futures Manifesto. It's all about a car wreck. <laughs> Typewriters and the, the mechanical motion of how we move. All of that was something Futurism was really into. Um. Supremacism was mostly Russian. <laughs> it didn't get real far over here. Dadaism. Dada, if you like things to be cheeky, if you like your art cheeky, you like Dadaists. Dadaists. <laughs> Their entire um, like manifesto is all about like gibberish. <laughs> and I, I will be I will be actually uh, going into some more detail about Dada in, in a couple weeks. So. It's really, it's really cool stuff. <laughs> it's wild. And they like to mock Hitler a lot. So, you know, anybody who likes to mock Hitler is pretty okay with me. <laughs> little Nicky. Yep, little, yep. Um, has anybody seen The Dark Knight movie? Yes. Yes, okay. You know when they're like, all those amazing, all that amazing architecture that's there? That's Art Deco. That's LaSalle Street in Chicago. <laughs> so you have art around you all the time, too. Uh, Bauhaus was all about, if you've ever seen minimalist furniture and gone, ooh, I like that. That's Bauhaus. Except they also did, you know, weird dotted things like furry teacups. <laughs> <laughs> Surrealism, which is all about the dream world. Abstract Expressionism, which we will talk about. <laughs> um, op art, optical art. Um, M.C. Escher, with like the bats and the devils and the hands and the lizards. Yeah, we, and we, we saw, I showed you some Escher last week when talking about perspective, and you know, that piece with the three-point perspective. That was Escher. Yep. Pop art, which we will talk a lot about too, which is art that references popular culture. Um, minimalism, which is unfortunately really still predominant in art. I like minimalism, don't get me wrong. <laughs> conceptual art, which basically all contemporary art can be traced back to conceptual art now too. Photorealism, so photography. <laughs> Except there's a drawing in such a way that it looks photorealistic. It, it's wild. Earth art, large earth constructions, or even like Andrew Goldsworthy with his, let's sneak into the woods and build things. Not kidding. <laughs> you know, expressionism, postmodernism, and there are more.